Holy freaking crap, Mewtwo has been confirmed in Pokemon Go. I was not expecting this. I was making a video for freaking Ho Ho, and this next thing I know, I see, look at my phone, and it's like, oh, confirmation. Mewtwo is now live. I'm like, this has to be a prank, right? And uh, no, it's confirmed. Mewtwo is now live in Pokemon Go. Uh, it's kind of weird the way they did it, but uh, let me just read it off the post. Trainers earlier today, trainers battle against the legendary Pokemon Mewtwo at Pokemon Stadium event in Yokama, Japan. Thousands of trainers were in attendance, were able to successfully capture Mewtwo and add him to your Pokedex. In the upcoming weeks, you two will have the opportunity to battle and catch Mewtwo in the new exclusive raid feature. So there's this new feature called exclusive raids. Exclusive raids are very weird, and I'm going to read the. I'm going to finish this, and then we're going to have a discussion about it. Exclusive raids are similar to pre-existing raid battles with a few notable differences. Exclusive raids will peri uh, periodically appear at gyms around the world. However, unlike existing raids, trainers will be invited to join the exclusive raids. To receive an invitation to participate in an exclusive raid battle, trainers must uh, have successfully completed a raid recently by defeating the raid boss at the gym where the exclusive raid will be taking place. Invitations will include an advance warning of when the exclusive raid will take place and giving ample time to coordinate with other trainers before taking on the powerful raid boss. So with that being said, this is going to be very, very, very strange and a very weird mechanic. So essentially, these exclusive raids, you're going to have to basically beat a raid down and then after a short time frame after that, you'll be giving a invitation to go back to the exact same, the exact same, not a nearby one, the exact same raid, and there will be a Mewtwo there. Which I find very, very weird and kind of like, what the heck? I could understand if Niantic made it to where if you did a raid in a certain area, you get invited to an exclusive raid in that area. That would make sense because then obviously there'd be like probably about, let's just say four active raids going on in that area. You do one of the four and then you get an invitation to uh, one of the active exclusive raids in that area. It would make sense. But this way they're doing it by one raid. You complete one raid and you will be invited into the exclusive raid but it has to be that one special very very sought after raid so they're either going to do it two ways right there's two options that they can go through and this is my hypothesis so number one they're going to base it by uh dense population areas and dense raiding spots so essentially if there's like a tyranitar obviously there's going to be a lot of people doing that tyranitar you can basically go off and manipulate this by getting a big raid coordination group let's just say that everyone in the downtown st pete area went to one single raid we all did that raid and basically like three or four groups cleared it out then we'd all get invited to a um exclusive raid because we hit the cap necessary to spawn Mewtwo. Most likely, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna guess that there is going to be a certain number of players that is going to forcibly activate a cap to uh, activate an exclusive raid because otherwise it's just gonna be, it's not gonna make any sense whatsoever if, let's just say there's a Magikarp raid down the street, that's the one that determines whether or not we all get to do the exclusive raid or not and who's gonna do that? No one, there's not going to be that many people doing an exclusive raid or doing a magic carp raid. So it's going to be based off of how many players are active and how many players are actively uh, joining that raid. So whichever raid probably does the most uh, traffic for that area is the one that's going to get picked for the uh, exclusive raid. That's my hypothesis number one. Number two, uh, they're going to pick one raid spot. And you're going to basically hit that raid spot. You can do it with as many people as you want. And you're going to get invited to that raid. But also, there, when once that raid despawns, another raid will, let's just say, spawn four hours later. And then anyone who does that raid will also get invited to it. So basically, you could go off and scout for exclusive raids by going off and saying, Oh yeah, the raid on 5th Street gave me an exclusive raid pass so you post it everywhere online everyone who goes and does one of those raids on fifth street goes and gets an exclusive raid pass and then you're set those are the two ways that i could see it happening if it's not those two ways and if it's just literally a two hour raid and within that time period enough people actually have to go off and get the necessary required or have to actually beat the raid to get the exclusive raid pass 
that sounds like almost impossible to get enough people to do Mewtwo. Like, realistically, you could probably get, like, easily 20 people, 30 people, okay? But people have lives. Going off and coordinating a Mewtwo raid, which is going to most likely require 15 to 20 people plus, uh, because you might actually get, like, some level 20s or something along those lines... It doesn't seem like really that feasible because you're going to have people that are always going to have like conflicting schedules. We don't know exactly how we're even going to communicate to the other raiders because supposedly we're going to be able to communicate and coordinate. So we're going to either have to message people on Pokemon Go. So unless they open up a chat system, which I highly doubt that's going to happen, this is going to be very, 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 very strange, but also completely awesome because... I know in my area, there's enough people that if if, if if it's abusable, we can do it. But for the people who are in, like, rural areas, for the people who are not in, like, the big three, like, Florida, California, and New York, I don't understand how you guys are going to do it. I, I seriously don't understand. Uh, I feel like this could be a good idea, but I feel like this is more of something that they should y utilize for events and not, like... For basically the general public because even knowing i like I, I like doing this and i really will i i will do it a mewtwo raid ultimately like it's going to happen but for everyone that's not like in a very big gaming state it's gonna be stupidly hard and i feel like it's actually unfairly hard for those people so i'd strongly recommend going off and making facebook groups right now uh Title it freaking Mewtwo Raids or some crazy crap like that. And trying to get like at least at least 35, 45 people. Because I think it's going to be one of those two hypotheses. Either you can forcibly activate exclusive raids by spamming the crap out of a one raid. Maybe if it's a tier 4, maybe if it's a tier 3. Maybe it just goes by off of uh, player traffic. Or one raid's going to be definitely giving you exclusive raid passes. And if you complete that raid during within like a, a time frame of like a week, it'll just keep on dumping it out. So you can basically post out the exclusive raid uh, dumper or exclusive raid uh, pass dumper gym, whatever the hell you want to call it. That would possibly be feasible. More along the lines is there has to be a method to all this madness. It can't be, well, you just did a magic carp raid in the middle of nowhere, and this ultimately, based off of RNG, is what dictates whether or not uh, people are joining this uh, exclusive raid. Uh, but yeah, there's like, there's like zero people here. You're the only one to ever complete this raid. So I don't think Niantic's going to screw up that badly, but we never know. I always do like new updates. So uh, yeah, let's jump to the counters. All right, guys. So here's the counter chart for Mewtwo. Mewtwo is weak against Ghost, Dark, and Bug. So Gengar is not good against Mewtwo because one, Ga Mewtwo also uses Ghost type moves such as Shadow Ball. And also Gengar is weak against Psychic because of its poison typing. So you don't want to use Gengar. That's why he's not on this list. Number one counter is Tyranitar, immune to Psychic, 50% uh, on Dark and 50% on Ghost. Fast move, Bite, Charge move, Crunch. Second counter is Houndoom. Immune to Psychic, 50% on Dark, 50% on Ghost, Fast Move Snarl, Charge Move, Foul Play. Third is going to be Umbreon, Immune to Psychic, 50% Dark, 50% Ghost, Fent Attack, and Foul Play. And number four is my man Scizor. Scizor is freaking awesome. Uh, half on Psychic, half on Normal. Uh, Mewtwo does no Hyper Beam for his Charge Move, so just throwing it out there. Fast move, Fury Cutter, Charge move, x -Scizor. So basically double uh, bug, char uh, fast, and charge. Pinsir, Fighting, 50%. He, uh, Mewtwo does no Focus Blast, which is a 140 fighting move. So pretty, pretty OP. Uh, fast move, Bug Bite, Charge move, x -Scizor. And finally, it's Fortress, half on Psychic, half on Normal, Bug Bite, and Heavy Slam. So those are the counters for Mewtwo. Uh, of course, you can always use uh, Pokemon such as Dragonite, etc. But these are the Pokemon that either resist 
and do super effective attacks. Uh, actually, all these guys do super effective attacks and resist them. So these are the ones that I would suggest putting in there. Uh, Mewtwo is like 49,000 uh, CP. So he's pretty damn strong. And you're going to want to have all the defenses you can possibly get. So uh, yeah, 